Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Justin Brooksby. I'm with the Utah Education Network, and I am the Associate Director for Professional Development at UEN, and we're happy to have today on this uh, webinar with us uh, Pablo. He's the Director of Instructional Design at BYU Continuing Ed, and we are going to be talking about a new resource that is available to Utah educators, uh, K-12 educators. And this is, I'm really excited for this. Um, this has been kind of a long process for us to bring these resources available to you. Um, it kind of all started with the statewide license for Canvas. And uh, that's something that happened last year. And a lot of feedback we heard at UEN from our instructors going out was, well, I have Canvas, where do I start now? And teachers would have kind of an empty shell, nothing in the course. And we would say, well, it's going to take you two to three years to get going and get a course in there and ready to go. And that's kind of overwhelming for a lot of the teachers in the state. So uh, when BYU approached us with this opportunity, uh, they have a lot of courses developed through their independent uh, study program. We thought that would be a great thing. And so here we are about a year later with this resource available. And we wanted to share that with you uh, today. So uh, I'm going to just uh, start off a little bit, uh, giving you a little bit more intro to what we have, and then uh, Pablo is going to share a little more in detail of what courses are available, how to use them, uh, and that type of information. And then at the end, uh, when he's done, I will be talking about how you access those through your Canvas account and how you download those and, and best practices with regards to that. So the first thing that I want to uh, share with you, I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, so this page here, this is where all the districts will go or charter schools go to request access to these resources. I will uh, put a link to it in the chat. However, if you are watching this at a later time, the best thing to do is probably to email us at training at uen.org. So training at uen.org, and we can provide this information. And I'm also going to show you at the end how you will know if your district has already requested this. So uh, check that first before you go in and just start filling this out. More than likely, we'll have you in our system already. So that's kind of the start of the resources. And one piece to note is that when we license this, we have specific licensing agreements with BYU. And I just wanted to make sure that those were clear. You can see uh, that information uh, on the screen right there. Uh, I'll just enlarge so you can see it. But these materials are available for teacher facilitated original credit courses in Utah only. Um, you cannot resell, redistribute, sublicense, or reverse engineer uh, that. Um, this copy agreement needs to stay on the course uh, when you download it from Commons. And uh, we also have only licensed this for blended learning environments. So it is not to be used for credit recovery or uh, online instruction. Uh, and if you have any questions about its usage, feel free to email us at training at uen.org. Um, so kind of the idea behind this is traditional, uh, I won't say K-12, but it's more like 7th through 12th on the resources. And, and a face to, they have to have a face-to-face -face class, and it's really designed for a blended learning environment. And Pablo will tell us a little bit more about it blended learning. What does that mean? How does it work? So that's kind of my introduction. Uh, Pablo, I'll turn over the time to you to kind of explain a little bit more about this. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Pablo Riboldi and I'm the Director of Instructional Design here at BYU. And I would like to uh, show you some of the courses and so what, what do we have available through this uh, licensing agreement with UEN for you to use. So there are uh, about 106 courses and this brochure has the list of all the courses that are available. Each course is designed to be basically to have the content, the assignments, the assessments for about a semester long class. Okay. 
these courses are based on the same courses that we sell for online uh, credit through independent study and also that we license separately for credit recovery through the what we call the high school suite to, to different schools and because of that that is why you cannot use these courses for those other two purposes okay so you know it's like we don't want to to undersell our ourselves but this list of courses has all the core courses all the elective courses you know a, a, a lot of the elective courses uh, that you would need in almost any school in order to complete a high school all the, the requirements for high school and um, some of the courses are also especially for middle school we are very proud of our courses the the, the content uh, of the courses especially we we have a um, kind of a specialty on foreign language courses and here we have included all the courses on Spanish, French, German, Japanese, um, that is about it of the foreign language mm -hmm. courses. Mm -hmm. And uh, ASL. Do we have the ASL courses here? No. Oh, okay. The ASL courses are in the independent study side. <laughs> then we have also all the math series following the Utah core. Um, this, this courses are really good. I'm going to show you some of those. And of course, history, English, the full four years of English, and all the, um, the, the electives for sciences and, uh, and even a lot of the PE courses. So that is kind of the, the list of courses that we have. All right. I'm going to show to you now a couple of those courses and how they are structured, what are the things that they have in them, and um, how you could use them, what, what I would suggest for teachers to, to do if they want to use them as blended courses. What are the things that they would need to, to take into account and how to approach using these courses in their blended classroom environments, okay? So, first off here, we are going to be looking at Math 53. So, this is um, one of the, the math courses. And the first page, the home page, has all the information about what are the topics that this course entails. And you see that there are some introductions, there are some external pages with the content. So in most of, in all of these courses, the content pages are external, either, sorry, either HTML pages or PDF pages that have the content of the, the instruction. Every lesson has also a quiz that we call a self-check at the end of the lesson, and we will see more how these are built, what are, do they have. And at the end of each unit, there's a unit quiz, a unit test, and we also normally have a mid-year exam and a final exam, mid-year or mid-semester exam, and then the final exam for the end of the, the semester. All right, so that is, all the courses are basically um, organized in a similar fashion, in a similar way. So you have the units, lessons, and then the lessons have the content pages, any uh, necessary materials, and then quizzes and unit uh, exams. The syllabus for the courses also show how the course is organized, all the things that are in the course. And one of the things that I want you to notice is that these courses do not have any uh, set due dates or any calendaring of the, the events. So that is kind of one of the first things uh, that you as a teacher would need to do is 
as you after you download the course you start looking through the course perusing the course and start scheduling all the different assignments and quizzes in order to fit your calendar of course that we we cannot do that for you and so you have to do that for yourself one of the things that the courses have is they have the full set of learning outcomes already identified okay so we have all the learning outcomes that are going to be addressed here in this course they are already uh, linked to the course and then i'll show you how uh, question banks test banks are linked to the learning outcomes this is a very very useful feature in order to keep you uh, moving forward with the learning outcomes that are aligned with the utah core this is an example of uh, one of our content pages and so we see here a pdf in this case in the math courses we have pdf files we are going to convert these to html files pretty soon but this this page is basically show the content that could be uh, assigned to the students to read basically as homework okay so if I were a teacher using this uh, course, I would look at the content pages and have these content pages assigned as homework, and then use the class time in order to do activities. So for example, here we have classifying triangles. And um, so, one of the things that I would do is assign the, 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 the students to read and study this page. And then in the class, I would add to the course after, let's go back to this part on the triangles, I think. Let's see, where are we? There's a unit there on triangles. Okay, so here, so I would probably add uh, after looking at the classifying the triangles and the videos of that so this is the, the page that shows all the videos that we have also on the topic and I would assign these two pages as homework and then I would add right here what would be the in-class activity that we would do on classifying triangles so whatever are the things that you normally now do in class, you can, you can actually do them. The, the main advantage here is that with this model, you don't have to use necessarily the class time to explain the concepts, but you can use the class time to applying the concepts, to doing the activities, to basically making sure that the students don't have any misconceptions and are able to master the concept of the class. And then you would probably uh, put the self-check on, on that as an assignment for the, the class. So this is the, the quiz. Uh, here we are looking at the preview of the quiz and it has all the different questions that we have in, uh, in our banks. And I'm going to show you how these are um, organized and uh, attached to the, to the different learning outcomes. So this would be uh, something that you could either complete in class with the students, or have them assign this as a homework following up. So the good thing about this type of organization in a blended environment is that here you are basically, you have the opportunity to um, go over the material of the lesson at three different times. Before class, having the students 
uh, read and study the content. Then during class, doing the activities, the application of the content. And then after class, you assign also the, the, the self-check in order to kind of do a review of, of the content, okay? So that is a, a very good way of using and organizing the material. The part here that you need to add of what are you doing in the class, we leave that totally open up to you. This is where we want you to feel free to use the activities that you'd like to do the most, okay? So that is the, the way to use the content in a blended environment. So here, okay, this is the quiz that we were looking at. So we have lots and lots of quizzes already built during the course, okay? practice quizzes and exams, unit tests, and so on, and all the self-checks for each one of the topics. Let's look at the, the question banks are also, uh, we have lots and lots of question banks, and if you can see, each question banks has a multitude of questions. Now, you would say, well, how, how am I going to, to be able to master these uh, question banks and so on? These are already all tied to the appropriate learning outcomes and they are all already tied to the quizzes. Let's look here at one question bank, for example. This one is about angles and perimeter. And what we have done is repeat the same in the math courses. This is particularly true of the math courses. It's not the same in, in all the other courses, but in math, it is important for the students to be able to practice and review the problems, but always have a different problem. And so what we have done here is generate lots of different versions of the same problem and put those into these uh, question banks. And so whenever the quiz or the exam pulls something from the question bank, chances are that the students are never going to get the same question twice. They, they, it is the same question, but it's always in a different version. So they will need to do the calculations and so on. So for example, this question bank has two types of questions. This one that uh, basically tells them, ask the students to calculate the sides uh, given the perimeter. And then there's this other question. Let me keep going down. So, where it asks the students to construct a triangle in paper, giving a specific angles. And as you can see, now here what we change is the type of uh, angles and so on, and then being able to uh, answer questions about that triangle. All right. So the, um, again, this, this gives the opportunity for the students to practice many times. You can also use these quizzes in class to, to display and work together problems with the students. And then if you give the assignment for the students to do at home, the chances are that they are going to get a different question, not the one that you practice at, uh, in class, uh, during class. So that is also Another way of blending the environment would be using these self-check quizzes as practice for in-class uh, practice. Okay. Um, any questions about this so far? Let me switch now to the English course that I wanted to show you.
This is ninth grade English part one. So this content would be for the first semester of uh, ninth grade. And of course we have part one and part two for, for each one of the courses. And I'm going to show you now how uh, to use this type of course in a blended environment. So the course also has the syllabus that gives you a description of the course, what are the main learning outcomes here, and the materials of the course. In this particular case, for example, in this course, we are going to be reading Night, To Kill a Mockingbird, and Much Ado About Nothing. One of the good things about this series of English courses is that we have made them so there is a really good progression, not only in the, in the reading materials, they, they don't repeat or overlap, but in all the other types of lessons, like vocabulary lessons, they follow a nice progression, the grammar lessons follow a very good progression, and, and so on. So, in the course, it's also the course is um, organizing units and lessons. The lessons also have content and then assignments and the self checks, similar to how it was in the in the math courses. So that is the same, and you can see that. They are in this unit, for example, we have lesson 1.1, theme and inference. But then when we go to lesson 2, 1.2 is on vocabulary. That is vocabulary pertaining, pertinent to the lesson. Lesson 1.3 in grammar. Okay. Lesson 1.4, historical background for night. Now just try, uh, introducing the main uh, reading for this unit. Okay. And then a personal background for night. So we have a, a very good progression of the content and the materials in, this, the, in each unit. And each unit has um, parts reading with dealing with uh, reading, writing, vocabulary, and grammar. This is an example of the content page. So this is the first content page talking about the poem "If." And again, if I were using this course in a blended environment, I would then assign the students to um, read the material in the content pages as part of what they do at home in preparation for the lesson, and then add here to the lesson what are the things that we are going to do in class. So for example, um, Many of the, 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 the lessons of the content pages have a, already built in this type of um, idea generation. So, for example, in this case, we have read the, the poem If and then ask which line speaks to you, which line inspires you. Well, as a teacher, you can get, take that and develop activities of what you could do in the classroom, all right? So that would be the way to use it in a learning, in a blended environment. All, all the, the um, it is very important to, to recognize that we don't want to take over the teaching, okay? We are just providing you with the tools and the instruments of content, and if you wish, with the, all the, the, the sequence that you can use in order to have already something that is completely developed in Canvas. If you want to add or replace something because 
you know, you say, oh, you know, I don't like this novel or I don't like this, uh, this activity, you are welcome and you are always capable to unpublish a page, okay? And then publish your own page of content or, or activities. So, but what we are trying to do here is, again, not to have you start from zero as a teacher, but give you all the tools that you could, you could have for that. So for example, here we have a page on theme that introduces what is theme and how can we um, derive the, the, the idea of theme in a novel and so on. You could add here an activity for the in-class portion of the lesson on being able to talk about different themes of novels that the students have read or things that the students already have done. The same thing here with the next idea on inference. So, all right, I would assign this as kind of preparation for the students to do before class. And so they come already prepared and then during the class, you do the activities dealing with, uh, with the, 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 the topic. Okay. Um, let's see, this other page here shows a reading assignment. And again, you can choose to use this reading assignment. It's already linked to an external source. And then dedicate the time in class to do all the activities that you would do with this reading assignment, identifying theme, identifying what are the different inferences, compare this reading with the poem that, that we read and, and so on. Lots of different uh, opportunities to, to do things. Let me show you uh, the vocabulary lesson, for example. Okay, this is one, one of the, the vocabulary lessons, how they are designed. Okay, and so we have here, this one is particularly on prefixes. And then there are flashcards, activities that allow the students to practice this on their, on their own. Okay. Let me show to you one of the grammar lessons. Okay. And again, this is material that is already available, is already put for you and ready to use in Canvas. So this one doesn't have a, there are some other lessons that have more practice activities or interactive activities for, for you to do. We have also, of course, the assignments in the, in the course. So um, in here, what you would need to do is come and edit the assignment. If you like the assignment, you can come and edit it. If you don't like the assignment, you want to replace it with something else, unpublish this one and publish your own. But if, if you are kind of uh, short on development time and, and you say, well, this one is, is good enough, let's give it a try. You come here, you edit the assignment, and then you put the due date, available from. Usually, the, and I, I don't put the available until. Okay, the available until is basically when, when that date happens, the, the assignment goes away and no one can, can access it anymore. And in my, my personal teaching, I always just use the, the due date. Sometimes I put the available from if I don't want the students to, to, keep, to go too, too far ahead of themselves but usually I try not to add the available until. They're only if, if I have a very good reason for doing that. Okay, so that would be the, the thing that you need to do mostly with the assignments and the quizzes is to put them in the calendar. So the students, when they go to the calendar view of the course, are able to follow that very, very well. 
Um, here, let me show to you the great book. We used to have more students uh, as uh, test students. These are all test students that are were assigned to, to here. Now I don't know where they have gone. But uh, there are two views of the grade book. One is the, 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 the common view where you see the grades per assignment. This one is also a very cool view where you see how students are performing for the different learning outcomes. Okay, and so as the students complete uh, quizzes or assignments that are linked to the learning outcomes, they would, you would be able to see here the statistics of how individual students and how the whole uh, course, the whole class is doing uh, for each particular outcome. This is a very good view because if you, if you have the self-checks, the students do the self-checks and they are consistently, you know, kind of on the red or orange, you would say, oh, probably I need to review this concept or need to do some remediation in this concept until they are kind of uh, more on the green side uh, for that learning outcome. And all these are already linked here for you in, in, in the course. The same thing here as we saw in the math courses, we have all the learning outcomes defined. Each learning outcome has also a rubric set up and that rubric is used in the quizzes and in the, in the mainly in the assignments, okay? The quizzes are self-graded. So here we see all the list of quizzes that are already built, all the self-checks for the lessons, the unit tests, okay, and the final exams and other writing assignments. And here we have the list of the test banks for the English class. You see that here the test banks have less questions per a learning outcome than in the math course because we don't have the redundancy that we had before. And here we see, for example, one set of the questions in one of the test banks. You can also add questions to the test bank. You can add banks. You can modify any of these things as you, as you need. Okay. Pablo, one of the questions we have, this is a good time to answer that, is what if teachers already had developed question banks tied to their existing course? How will the BYU links to outcomes interface with the teacher's established outcomes? I'll take a jab at this question and then you can add anything that you want, but um, the, those question banks, they, they, they pull over from the BYU course and then there, there would be separate question banks linked to different outcomes that the teacher's already done. Those are gonna remain separate unless the teacher wants to go through some work to combine those question banks and, and realign those outcomes. But that's my basic understanding of what would happen if there's existing um, out outcomes and banks that are already created. I don't know yes. if you wanna add anything to that, Pablo. Well, uh, no, what you said is, is uh, precisely correct, okay? So let's suppose that, so I, I, I have, uh, let me see if I understand the, the scenario. I have a teacher that already has a course that they have already started working and they, they, they have developed some part of the course and so on. Now, how can we blend these two courses uh, together, all right? Um, you can, you can download the, here, the BYU course from the UEN site, and then you can either export the content of this course and then import it to the other course or do the other thing around. You export the content of your course and import it into this one, all right? What will happen is that then the two, the, the, the contents will be all together. It would be up then to the teacher to organize now the pages here in according to, to, to what they want. And also they would, the, the learning outcomes would be added. The test banks will be added to all the list of test banks. 
and then you can um, connect the test bank to a, le a learning outcome, all right? So there's no um, conflict, okay? It's, it's going to require some work to do that, but it's not, not something uh, impossible, all right? My suggestion as to which course to import or export depends on which one probably has the most content that you want to keep, okay? Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yep, that looks like it answers her question. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Mm -hmm. Great question. All right, here we, he we see an example of the unit quiz, the unit quiz of uh, unit one. And again, it's all organized already and pull in from the, the, the question banks. And the question banks, again, are, are linked to the learning outcomes. So when you look at the gradebook, when they finish that, they are going to have a lot of information about the mastery of the learning outcomes of, of all of unit one. Mm -hmm. the, the students will have already that done. Um, for example, if you have already developed some questions in a course and import those into this course into a, a, as a question bank, then what you would do is you have them here in your list of question banks and you come and then click on align to outcome and then you link this uh, new question bank to whichever outcome they belong to. Okay, so that is that is basically how how that works, mm, right? Uh, the, um, let me see if I can show you. I thought that I had this open. The um, the assignments are also linked to uh, rubrics that show what a uh, learning outcome they are mastering. So for example, here we have a writing assignment. We have the assignment itself. And then underneath here, we have the rubrics already built and already described on critical thinking, length and organization, and which of the learning outcomes they uh, address, this particular assignment addresses. This is very, very useful because when students complete the assignment, you go to the grade, to the, 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 the speed grader, and you basically are able to see the rubric and you click and click the, the different parts of the rubric and it already adds all, all the points. It keeps track of their mastery of the learning outcomes. This is also all part of, of, of that, that report on, on how the students are progressing on the learning outcomes. You give some feedback and you are done. So it's a very, very efficient and complete way of using the assignments. To create this from scratch is a lot of work. Okay, I, I, I have tried, I have done it in, in some of my courses. And, you know, it requires really a lot of uh, thinking, a lot of clicking a lot of repenting and doing again, <laughs> okay? But, and so having these uh, assignments already created is uh, a very, very good um, uh, value really for, for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is basically what I wanted to show to you and uh, sharing all the, the ideas on, on how to use these courses, how they are organized and how to blend them, okay? So I'll pass the screen back to Justin, if that is okay.
Yeah, thanks, Pablo. That's a great explanation of how we can uh, use those and make use of them. And I'm just going to reiterate something that uh, Pablo already said in that it's not, it's not our intention to dictate what is taught in the schools. This is only a resource that's available to teachers. So I want to make sure that that's clear as well. So before we finish up, I'm just going to show you really quickly how teachers can access the courses and best practices uh, involved with that. So let me share my screen again. All right, so this is a dashboard that a teacher might have um, when they log into Canvas. And there's, uh, once the district has uh, enabled Commons first, that has to be done at the district level and also uh, you have to be enrolled as a teacher and at least one course in your Canvas instance. Once those two requirements are met, teachers will see this button over here on the left-hand side that says Commons. And the first thing you'll see is kind of a repository. It's an international repository of courses that's shared throughout Canvas. What we are most interested in seeing is the consortium here that we've created. It's called BYU Independent Study Blended Resources. Once the district or school has set this up on the back end, on the administrative side, teachers will just see this link up here at the top. If you're a teacher um, in this webinar now or watching it at a later time and you do not see this link, uh, please contact your district office and uh, get in touch with one of the um, Canvas administrators and uh, they can have that turned on for you. Uh, but once teachers see this link, they can click on it and all the courses will come up here. Uh, it's really nice the way that you can find them is you can uh, just uh, search for it here. So if I type biology, all the biology courses will come up. And uh, you can also uh, search by grade level. So if you just want 10th grade, uh, all those resources will come up for you. Um, type really doesn't um, make sense in this because everything is shared as a course. Uh, the items are not shared uh, individually, but you can get individual items from the course if you like, and I'll show you how to do that. So uh, to get the course, what uh, I'd recommend doing is, uh, let's go back to biology course here. Take biology uh, part one, and I'm gonna click on it. And really, you're not going to see much at first. Um, there's just a summary with the licensing terms on it, if you click on pages, quizzes, and modules, all you see is the title of each one of those. That's not going to do much for the teacher to just see that. So in order to see all the content, the teacher is going to have to download uh, the entire course from uh, the Canvas Commons Consortium. And the way that I would recommend they do that is to download it into a shell course. And by a shell course, I mean that's an empty course with no students enrolled in it. Um, the opposite of a shell course, I would say, is a live course, and that would be a course that um, maybe is, is synced and, and comes in from the student information system if you have it synced to Aspire or PowerSchool or whatever SIS you're, you're using. And the reason why I say you should uh, download it to a shell course is because uh, you may download the wrong course content or you may decide you do not want all of it and then it just becomes a mess on getting rid of it. So uh, the way that you can get a uh, empty shell course, and this is also set up at the district level, and if you do not see this, you will need to contact your district Canvas administrator, is uh, that from your dashboard, you will see a link that says start a new course, and then you can put in a course name and, and start it. Uh, do not uh, enroll any students into this. This is just for your browsing capability of the course. So if you do not see this start a new course, once again, you will need to contact your district to have that turned on. I'm gonna go back to Commons here, and I've already created a shell course. And so uh, I'm gonna show you how to get that there. So we'll go back to this biology course. And the, the courses that you are enrolled in as a teacher will show up over here on this list. And let's say this is the shell course that I created called BYU Commons Import Test. I will click that and I will click this import into course. That will download the entire course. 
At this point, there's no way to download parts of the course. You have to download the entire thing. You could also download it as a file. This is a compressed file, uh, course file. Um, I, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it because then you're not going to get any updates that uh, BYU might make to the course. If BYU does update the course contents and you import it through this method here, this updates button will light up when they make an update. It'll tell you what they've updated and give you the option to update it in your own course. Uh, so once you import the course, it'll you know, take 10, 10 to 15 minutes just depending on how large the course is. And then that course should show up. Maybe not necessarily if you don't see it in your dashboard, it will be on this list of courses. You can scroll down and find it there. Uh, however, my course is on my dashboard and I'm gonna click on it to see what is available. So now I have access to uh, all of the content. Now, uh, now what you would do to get this content over to your live course, once you look at it, um, you can see uh, everything at this point, but what you wanna do at that point to get it to your live course is You'd go and find your live course here. Let's say this is my live course here. Uh, I'll open it up. I'll go to settings and I'll import course content. And I can either, uh, I'd pick copy a canvas course and then you can search for the course name here. And then at that point you can either import all content or specific content, okay? Uh, if you are doing specific content, once you import it, you'll have a link here that says select the content that you want to import, and you can pick what content you want to import. Uh, I will make one note here that if you're only importing um, assignments and quizzes, you will want to make sure that you also uh, pull over the banks. Um, Here's a little page here that kind of shows you that. You'll want to make sure you import the question banks yeah, because if you don't import the question banks, uh, you're not going to have links to the core and learning outcomes, etc. Uh, and even better, I'd probably suggest the best thing to do is import the entire course and then just unpublish the content that you don't want to use or delete it completely. Um, so that's the way that you import uh, into the course. Once you have the content in your uh, live course, uh, a couple things to note. Let's pretend this is my live course. Uh, you are also going to want to make sure if you want any of your assignments linked back to your student information system, that you move the assignments over to the imported categories that were pulled over from your, from your SIS, from your student information system that's the only way that that grade passback is going to work. If you're not concerned about the grade passback, then that's really not a point and you don't need to move them over. Um, so I think that's all that I uh, really wanted to, uh, to point out as far as how to access the courses and get them into uh, your uh, Canvas content. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us here at UEN Professional Development. Um, also, uh, you, what I'd recommend is if you are looking for a way to license this information that's outside of the license agreement that we have with uh, BYU, feel free to email us at training at uen.org and we will put you in touch with BYU about additional licensing options. Uh, I'm going to unshare my screen here and see... Justin, will you show one more time how to set up for grade pass back? Yeah, so um, I won't be able to show exactly how to do that because I don't have um, anything imported from SIS, but uh, I'll give you kind of an example. Um, so um, when you have uh, all your content imported here and your assignments, uh, what you'll have in assignments is categories uh, right here. So this would be a category called assignments. This is another ca uh, category called assignments and exams. Um, so these are all 
categories in here. These are going to be imported in from your student information system, those different categories. Uh, so what you would have to do is whatever the name of the category is, uh, you would have to take that quiz question and drag it into that appropriate category in order for the grade pass back to work. Um, that's what I mean by putting it into those imported categories. Uh, if you just leave it where it's at, it's not going to import. So all that grade pass back happens with these categories. So you just take that and drag it into the category that was pulled from the student information system. And, so, and as far as I understand, the, the categories that we have are, don't have any, uh, you know, it's just an organization. It's that they don't do anything, all right? So there's no, no uh, secondary or negative effect by dragging those assignments or quizzes to the imported categories. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly correct. It, it doesn't change um, question banks or outcomes or anything like that. They're just categories for the grade pass back. All right, that looks like that answered uh, your question. So um, we're just going to see if there's any other questions that we have. Uh, if there's not, then we'll end the um, webinar now. And once again, I remind you, we will share this and make it available to you and I'll sit, be sending that out. A question about how long should it take for BYUIS to show up in Commons after we have let you know we wanted? Once you fill out the form, I get notified via email. What I do is go in, I send an invitation uh, to you and um, that invitation is going to be in uh, your Canvas uh, Commons. And you have to, a Canvas administrator has to go into Canvas Commons on the consortium tab and accept that invite. As soon as that happens, then teachers will instantly have access to the material. Is that, is that at the district level or the school level? Um, it's at a district level for the schools that are in districts. It is at a school level for our charter schools. It's really an, an instance level for Canvas. So if your Canvas instance is at the district level, that's where you'll find it. There are some schools that started out early that may be in their own instance. I know there's some high schools that did it before the district did. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to contest, contact us at UEN Professional Development. So how do you know if your district has access? Uh, the best way is to um, click on the button that will take you into Commons and see if you have that link on the top left-hand corner that uh, links you to the BYU material. Um, is there a cost to the district? There, there is no cost to the district for the license agreement that we have. The agreement that we have with BYU is for five years um, and hopefully we have uh, lots of use of this in, this, in the state. And, uh, we can look at renewing that at the end of five years when we get to that point. So there is no cost to the district as long as it meets the licensing terms that I have described uh, at the beginning of this webinar. And, and it is also our, our best desire that this is used a lot, okay? And if there's any uh, questions or feedback, feel free to reach to us uh, that we can, so we can make things better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And if, if, you, if you need to use it for specifically online or credit recovery, also contact us uh, so we can set you up with the additional license. They are not very expensive, really. Okay, they are very, very affordable and uh, they satisfy a, a very important need also. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thanks for the uh, for the comment there. Yeah, I am super excited to have this. I think it's something that we definitely needed, and the response we've already presented this at a couple different places has been really good uh, from the from the teachers. So, um, yeah, let us know if uh, there's anything uh, else that uh, you need as far as PD goes with this. 
we'll be happy to try to accommodate, but we hope that this webinar kind of serves as a starting point for teachers out there.